Hey everybody, good Wednesday morning. I'm Chief Meteorologist Brad Penovich. We're keeping an eye on what could be a pretty significant severe weather outbreak to our west and southwest, but there is some good news for the Carolinas that we will see this system weaken as it pushes east. But if you do have friends and family to the southwest, they should be very weather aware today. I'm keeping a close eye on our Thursday risk, but I will tell you overall, the risk right now looks relatively low, which is a good sign. So here's the setup. You could see our, our system across the middle of the country. It's not too hard to figure out where this thing is. Uh, we've got warm, humid air surging north. And by the way, we're still kind of wedged in with some cool air. Uh, don't be fooled. This morning and probably through early afternoon, it's going to feel like yesterday. But with this warm front pushing north, eventually this front will push through and we'll see temperatures probably jump pretty quickly. And just to show you that, I will quickly show you the surface temperatures out there. We'll put the temperatures up here and kind of show you where that warm air is surging north. You can see it really moving up ahead of that front. And the other thing we're seeing is pretty significant increase in dew points. I'll show you the dew point temperatures as well. And really the dew points in, in this case are probably more important because that's the fuel for these storms. That low level moisture um, really drives uh, the fuel. And you can see how they've shot all the way up into central I I Illinois and even uh, maybe even into eastern Iowa almost. Um, yeah, almost all the way to Cedar Rapids. But you see across the Charlotte area and the Piedmont, we've got some somewhat drier air still advecting in. But this warm front right there is going to push north today, and that's going to set the stage for what's coming uh, for tomorrow and really probably tomorrow morning, to be honest with you, the way it's looking. So let's look at that severe weather outbreak. I'll turn today's risk on, and you can see, yeah, it's not too hard to tell where we're going to have issues today. So if you have friends or family in that area in red, in particular that area that's highlighted, that's a very high risk um, for storms almost to our extreme category, but not quite there. And again, straight line winds, a big issue, but there's a 15 to 20% chance of tornadoes in that area. And I'll show you the tornado probability just because it is very heightened. You can see two, five, 10, 15. I mean, you're getting to some pretty significant um, tornado risks in that area in the middle. So that's why we're watching that area carefully. Now, tomorrow, that risk moves into the Carolinas and you notice it kind of does a split and most of the areas in the low risk. So we're looking at a medium risk to the north and a medium risk to the south. I'm going to show you why I think this is probably going to stay low, but if we do see the risk go up, I'll explain why. We're probably going to see some of these southerly winds crank in that low level moisture. So let's get right to the future cast. All right, so we're looking at the short range rapid refresh models. You can see that nasty squall line pushing east today. I'm going to stop this later this afternoon because you could see why we've got that high risk across areas of Tennessee down to New Orleans. That's a nasty squall line. The thing to watch for folks in Mississippi today, this line is bad enough, but if you see individual cells pop out ahead of it, those would be super cells. But in, embedded in that line could be tornadoes, but this is a huge wind risk um, for many areas. And you'll see as we go through time, this pushes east into the evening hours. A few cells try to pop up on the warm front here in the Carolinas, and that's something to watch for later today. But overall, I'm not expecting much rain other than drizzle. Now, here comes the line. It's 2 a.m. It's moving into eastern Tennessee. As it moves east, it starts running into what is probably going to be cooler, less, uh, more stable air across the Carolinas. Now, it will likely weaken, but I still think there's a potential we could see some strong damaging winds with this. And again, that's why the low risk is in place. It's nothing near as strong as what we're seeing in, in Mississippi and, and over in Tennessee, but the potential for some strong, you know, straight line winds. The front itself is actually back here, and that's something else to watch tomorrow. This moves through right around 9 a.m. Gusty winds, rumble of thunder, very heavy rain. Then it pushes east, and again, you can see up in here, we could see a risk, and then down here, the medium risk, but there's the front. Now, the reason I'm watching the front carefully I think this this should be relatively low end risk, but if warm air, humid air stays in place as the front approaches, there won't be as many storms as we're seeing over here, but these individual storms could bear watching as we go into the afternoon hours. But you see how they push east and they kind of kind of fall apart, but they're still there. So evening hours, pay attention. That could be something interesting to watch as the front pushes through and then pushes out. So let's look at the ingredients. You know, significant tornado parameters, great product to show you, you know, where we see the the the, the significant, you know, at least ingredients for tornadoes. We go into tomorrow morning, not a lot in place across the Western Carolinas, but as we go into the afternoon, you could see after two o'clock, there is a little uptick here of around one to two. So there is the potential that tomorrow afternoon, Eastern North Carolina could see an uptick in that energy. 
If we look at the uh, what we call the rotational tracks, and again, this is not necessarily where there's going to be tornadoes, but I look at where there's the number of rotation tracks shows me the updraft helicity or basically the rotation within storms. Pretty potent to the west. The system does weaken as it moves into the Carolinas and then pushes off to the east. And you can see not nearly as many over our areas we're seeing to the southwest, much more in the way of tracks. But up in here, that's where that medium risk is. And then down here, the medium risk kind of in between not a whole lot in place. Now, the thunderstorm fuel, which is one of those things you know, I show you quite often, how much are we gonna have in place? Well, let's look at this. Here's the warm front tonight. You can see it bringing a little bit of that fuel, but tomorrow morning, just not a lot of fuel. I mean, those are really low numbers. Now, in the afternoon, it tries to perk back up, but again, mainly in Eastern North Carolina. So generally the scale here, you know, our low end scale, I think really bodes well for the Carolinas. We'll watch this, but unless this thing slows down, if it slows down and allows for warm, humid air to get pulled up ahead of it, so if this doesn't happen at 5 a.m., if this front is here more like 11 to noon and starts moving into here in the afternoon, then we could see a much higher risk. But right now, the timing is working in our favor. But the folks that need to be really weather aware are these folks back here. And again, I'll just turn this on. This is the severe weather outlook today. That is going to be a nasty setup in parts of Mississippi, Alabama, even Louisiana, into southern parts of Tennessee. So if you have friends or family there, tell them to stay weather aware. And I'll keep you up to date on the system as it weakens and pushes into the Carolinas on Thursday.